We made three big announcements today. The first was what we call the Connecting Heroes Initiative. This is unprecedented. This is a commitment to provide completely free service for all of the nation's first responder departments that are public or nonprofit. That's police, fire, and EMS. Every single first responder at every single agency, if they want it, completely free of charge in an unprecedented 10-year commitment. Connecting Heroes Initiative. <coughs> the second is Project 10 Million an initiative to close the homework gap. Literally a $10 billion commitment over the next few years to provide 10 million internet connections to people with children so that we can make sure that every single child in this country is connected and no one's left behind. And the third is T-Mobile Connect, an unprecedented $15 offer. That's half our previous best price ever for people on tight budgets who want not just 4G, but 5G service and a commitment to keep that price slashed for at least five years. So Roger, just to add, that there was, um, those were the uh, moves, the uncarrier moves, but there was so much more that was being announced today. Uh, today was a glimpse into so many questions people have, which is when the new T-Mobile comes, are they gonna be uh, adopting the same competitive spirit as what we've learned to love with, uh, with the Uncarrier now. Uh, they're going to be aggressive. Is competition going to rise up? And um, this was a resounding answer that this is, this is what you can expect. It's who we are. Uh, second thing is it's a good reminder is the new T-Mobile is coming. Uh, it's taken a while, but it's right around the corner. And then thirdly, all of this is part of what's going to happen because the gigantic capacity that the new network will have, the 14 times capacity of the standalone T-Mobile and what we plan on doing uh, with that capacity. So there's a lot of stuff going on at once. It's an exciting day. Yeah, and let me break down some of the programs with you. The, the $15 plan, that is two gigs, and I think after the two gigs, you're, you're kind of capped off, which is a little bit different than your normal plans, which you end up throw, throttling down. Why the decision to just cap off as opposed to uh, like a throttle plan? Or right. What we learn as we go. Uh, you know, what happens when people get um, throttled or where they get a slower speed after the initial bucket um, is sometimes they mistake that for network performance. And we, we don't want them to be left with a perception that the network is slow. So it's two gigs. But on the other hand, there's a piece to it that I, I didn't get to, which is we also simultaneously announced that the new T-Mobile will have a five gig plan as well at $25, still less than our previous best ever price for talk, text, and data. And that's a very mainstream usage profile, five gigs. So it's not average, but it's very mainstream. So you have two gigs and five gigs and opportunities to buy more data if you want. We're trying to help to communicate that this company is going after AT&T and Verizon, not just now, but into the future. And so this, this product comes with an annual data upgrade. That means the one that has two gigs this year, it'll automatically be two and a half gigs per month next year, three gigs the following year. The one that has five gigs works the same way. So it's, it's an unprecedented offer construct. So what else did it, what else did it um, answer? Is we, we in effect took our lowest uh, plan and cut it in half. So the big question a lot of people have is, you know, what's gonna happen uh, to competition at the low end of the market for people that really need uh, affordable offers. So we answered that in a resounding way. We took something that is a very successful, cut it in half. Now, you know what happens next. It's not gonna stand alone. You know, that, you know dumb and dumber, it, they're, you know, they're over there. And those cable guys, they're gonna sit there now and look at this. So we're demonstrating that the competitive environment with the new T-Mobile, right, two things that we've been preaching for a long time. Unlike any other merger, any other industry, in this one, capacity is going up, prices are going down because supply is going so far up. And that's, you know, that's a concept that you can talk about, but demonstrating it, uh, is very important, and that's amongst the things we showed today with that this particular offer. As a household, how, how are you eligible, or how do you find yourself eligible for that program? Well, it may differ by state. So the first step is we're going to allocate the 10 million units to each state on a pro rata basis on, based on population. Okay. And then we're going to work with organizations or government bodies in each state uh, to work on the mechanism for qualification and delivery. But the principles are pretty clear. It's going to be for families with school-age kids um, who have a demonstrated um, 
uh, limited means in, to be able to afford the categories products and who are underconnected. Maybe because of affordability or maybe because uh, the, big, the big cable companies just haven't covered their area and we mm. can get there with this 5G network. So those are the principles and you know, the qualification details we'll, we'll announce closer to. This will be announced um, you know, as we roll out the new company and, and close the merger in early in 2020. You pretty much know who they are, right? I mean, the definition, as you think yeah. about it, is, um, is pretty clear. And in some, uh, we've had conversations with states about this idea. And you know, some, some uh, refer to the school lunch program or, you know, or they had their own ideas. But when you start engaging in questions associated with um, here's how we best identify who they are, and here's the best way to get to them. Those are easy, you know, and that's, uh, you know, but it's, it's just a, uh, it, it's a great statement. And with this amount of capacity, and this being one of the first things that you're going to do with that capacity, I think it makes a major statement. Probably the most exciting part of today for us. I mean, organizations have talked about the homework gap for a long time. Mm -hmm. e even T-Mobile and Sprint both have programs to try to chip away at it. Government initiatives have tried to chip away at it. This is the first time somebody has stepped up and said, what if we could solve it? What if we could literally provide connections to every single family that are underconnected? What if every child was connected? And you know, if you think about, in our society today, equality of opportunity is one of the most talked about topics. Mm -hmm. um, people are being left behind and the outcomes aren't the same. And education is the great equalizer. But the problem is not everybody has access to the tools of education. Right. And in a digital society, you know, obviously con connectivity is important. And th this is the first time anybody's ever said, what if we could just solve it? And it, it's an incredible ambition. Connecting Heroes program, there you go. The, the first responder program, uh, the 10 year one. Um, is this, I mean, is this a shot, a direct shot at AT and T specifically, that's building out a dedicated first responder network in FirstNet? Well, we're we're definitely challenging AT and T and Verizon to step up and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, this is what competition looks like. Uh, this is doing well by doing good. So, you know, our company we we bring it to AT and T and Verizon. But but this is also a demonstration of our values. You know, this is this is an example of what we can do when we put these two companies together and create this massive capacity, the question is, can we do something really impactful for society mm -hmm. with that capacity? And you know, who, whose connection is more important to our lives than our first responders connection? So we thought somebody should step up and provide this connection to people because they're budget constrained. If they're paying for wireless through that AT&T program you yeah. talked about, that means that they don't have money for other important life-saving initiatives. And so we thought, if we can provide it to them for free, let's just do it. And let's simultaneously challenge the other guys to do the same I thing. Think the, I think the, uh, the AT&T shot is just a side benefit. You know, always something of interest to me. Mm. Um, but, but to be able to take, uh, to be able to make the statement, hey, you know, we've done things already. First responders are very important to us and we put our best you know, capabilities to thanking them in our first responders program that we've already announced. But then to look at the capability that the new T-Mobile is going to have and say, hey, you know what? We want to make it clear uh, that we're using 5G for good and what we stand for. So here we go. We're going to say thank you all the way to these most critical and we're going to make it free. Now, I'm pretty sure if I'm sitting over there in, you know, first net land, you know, between worrying about whether or not the activists are going to throw me out of office and worry about all the stupid money I spent, I sit there and think, hey, this, this could impact my ability to overcharge first responders using mm -hmm. FirstNet. Um, I, I just got a note from John Ledger and he said, hey, I got a great idea. Why don't you join us in giving that to them for free? Um, that, that's the invitation. If that's a shot, um, I like it. Uh, but the winners, are, you know, right now, right now I'm sure uh, first responders feel thanked. And first responders right now are really interested in the outcome of the creation of the new T-Mobile. And I think that's, you know. 
Well, that's the thing. That these programs are all tied to or contingent upon the, <coughs> the deal actually going through with you, closing your deal with Sprint. Uh, how, where are we with that? How, how close are you with yeah. that? Are the, how are the discussions with the state attorney generals? Yeah, and let's, let's just, as we enter into it, let's just remember, it, it's not that we wouldn't want to do these things. We couldn't. You know, it's like uh, you just don't, you know, you don't have the network capability mm. to do these kind of things. So, you know, it's not, it's not like a matter of principle. You know, hey, if you let me do this deal, I'll, you know, I'll do nice things for society. Um, the journey towards getting this deal approved, um, you know, wh when I started uh, this, uh, Mike was in high school. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it's, it's been a long process. So let's just, let's just remember. Um, the FCC has approved the deal. The DOJ has approved the deal. 18 of 19 state PUCs have approved the deal. Um, a series of state attorney generals have uh, taken action to attempt to block the deal, even before the federal agencies ruled. Okay, um, we're moving through a process where we have been having very good discussions with all the states. Uh, several states have dropped uh, their 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 ability to play in the participation, and the trial starts uh, December 9th. Mm -hmm. A trial, you know, we're very confident that we'll be successful in, and we are still in very good discussions with all of the states, including, you know, the lead state uh, of New York uh, and California. So that's where we stand. And I, I think these topics uh, today, you know, they, it's not the reason for them, but they play, they play a role in a dialogue that's taking place, right? I mean, I can tell you, as a person walking down the street in New York, outside, I can tell you a list of things that I've committed to do that will happen if the deal is settled or approved and won through, I can't tell you what happens if, in fact, the new T-Mobile does not get created, the dish does not get created, mm -hmm. what happens with Sprint, et cetera. So there's a, there's a visible scorecard of what's good, and I think that's playing into this process as well. Uh, Want to talk about 5G. You talked about uh, the low band network launching on December 6th. How are you going to be, I guess, promoting or marketing that service, given the fact that this over this past year, five, the story of 5G has gotten a little bit confusing, it's gotten a little muddled. Um, how, how will you be presenting this 5G network? Yeah, I think we've been, I'll start, Mike, I think we've been, we've been more balanced, right? And, and a lot of it may be that, you know, Neville Ray is, is probably the, you know, one of the world leaders in understanding what 5G is and how to architect it. Um, the United States has gone off on a silly short-term marketing campaign about first to 5G, and it's really a shame because it's it's you know it's lost uh, some of the vision as to as to what's coming. What we're doing, uh, we'll be very careful. We will announce our 5G nationwide layer. We will have handsets will be available, but we're also going to simultaneously be very clear how that low band layer fits into the layer cake that's required to deliver true ubiquitous 5G over time. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the mid band, the sprint capability is very important in the, mm. in the capacity. And then we have been implementing millimeter wave. With those together, we'll share a vision as well as to where we're headed and when you can expect those items. But keeping it, keeping it as to, yeah, it's very exciting. Here's what it covers, here's what you can do. But here's where it fits into a true vision for 5G. Mm. And part of that does require that we point out the fallacy of what some of our competitors are doing. But in true T-Mobile fashion, what we're really hoping for is that they all get their stuff together and create what the country needs, which is real 5G, that stuff that gives you autonomous driving over time and simultaneous translation and telepresence capabilities, et cetera. Not that you can sit in row 10 in a stadium at a you know, Verizon game and check stats, uh, you know. Yeah, I, I think um, it's gonna be very clear that our approach is so different from the other guys. And you know, it'll be a lot of fun telling that story over the next couple of years. And it starts with the launch this year. On day one, we're gonna to touch 200 million people when we turn on 5G on December 6th. That, that's, that's such a stark difference from how Verizon began it or how AT&T began it with a, a fake 5G. So it starts. 
And then as John said, it's gonna continue because we're the only ones doing real truth telling when it comes to 5G. We're starting across the country with this broad layer, but we're also t telling the public that real 5G requires all of the spectrum to be switched over to 5G, something that T-Mobile's that uniquely enabled to do. Um, only we have a plan to be able to put low, mid, and millimeter wave spectrum all on 5G in the near term so that c customers can have a transformed experience in the kinds of scenarios that John talked about. Now, Roger, we go way back, you and I, right? Do. do you agree that 5GE was the most embarrassing thing that a, a, a wireless company has ever done in history? Uh, no comment. This is a yes, no question. <laughs> If you can uh, think of something else, I'll just to say, say it wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, what comes after 5GE? F. Yeah. There you go. There's the score. You heard it here. <laughs> F. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, last question. I do want to play a quick word association. Game oh, after, here we go. But the, the last you know, that question. That hasn't worked for you, Roger. Year. I know. It hasn't worked <laughs> ever. Why do you stick with it? Though? I stick with the gimmick. <laughs> I got to commit to the gimmick. I, Mike's going to answer. Let, well, let me I'm deferring right. to my son on this. <laughs> Go. Well, let me ask a serious question about, because yeah. um, it hasn't been talked about in a little while, the, the over-the-top video service that you guys have talked about, and I know you've already launched uh, a more traditional service, but what is that, what can you tell me about that service, like timing-wise, how is it going to look? There's obviously a lot going on with the, the streaming services that are launching now. Um, That's how, a long how is, word association. <laughs> this <laughs> is the worst word association oh, I've yeah. ever, I know. <laughs> But how is your service going to look and how does it compare to what's, what's out there now in the market? Yeah, we launched T-Vision Home earlier this mm -hmm. year and that's, as we said at that point, was a start and a stepping stone towards our real strategy, which is a mobile, over-the-top uh, mindset. And uh, we're, we're very excited about that. I mean, it's crystal clear to us that consumers look at this rapidly changing video landscape with two reactions. One, it's exciting, and two, it's confusing. And they know, they've told us we can play a role in that. Um, millions of them get their Netflix through us now. Um, they've turned to us to help navigate this OTT, over-the-top video world. And we know we can provide more. We know we can make it easier for them to make these choices, to pay for OTT. Mm. Our strategy is going to be one of partnerships. We've announced some of those partnerships, like our exclusive partnership with Quibi, which is Jeffrey Katzenberg's new initiative in mobile, which is going to be very exciting. Partnership with Viacom, our ongoing partnership with Netflix. We're going to take these things and make a simplified world for consumers in the mobile space. Now, the merger has caused us to punt that out a few months later than we would have liked, but the, the opportunity space that we've been articulating is more acute than ever. All right. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, so I'll just throw some words at you guys. Yeah, is, is it for Mike? It's this his, is, it's, come on, he's all right, got it. All right, part Mike, of his development. You. <laughs> I, won't, I won't throw out any Batman questions. Okay. Uh, all right, I know, I Double. know. Double, uh, All right, Mike, first word that comes to your mind. All right, Verizon? Dumber. <laughs> See, he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> he can't help it. Or is it dumb? They We've never dumb. really been yeah, a, come yeah. on, you know, yeah. right yeah. now, uh, AT&T's AT definitely dumber. Suck. <laughs> Dish Network? Prepared. Sprint? Family. HBO Max? Late and expensive. <laughs> uh, Attorney General? Listening. Spectrum? Shit ton. <laughs> ton. All right. <laughs> this is for you, Mike Skywalker. Wow. Um, can't wait. All right. Thanks, guys.